Welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. In this episode, Tomo is going to show us how to make a cocktail bait. Some people, I think in the States, they call it a combo bait. There's two different baits put together. Good for beginners, could catch your fish. Okay guys, um, what I'm going to show you today is a mixture of cocktail baits that we use out here in the Bristol Channel. Uh, we catch a lot of rays, husks, smooth hounds, uh, eels, and they all enjoy a, a cocktail bait. Our water's quite coloured, so getting something quite smelly with plenty of scent down there is going to give yourself the best chance. Uh, so the baits I've got here today are bluey. Um, bluey or Pacific Sari is a very, very oily fish. It's fantastic for the rays out here. Uh, your classic calamari or dirty squid. Uh, some pieces of mackerel and then I've got some prawns just here and I'll just show you the way I make up my cocktail baits. If I was going to choose bluey, and now these are quite small bluey, um, what I do is just nip the tail off and have a chunk of it, that sort of size. Okay, um, I'm going to wrap this up with a little bit of squid as well. So my squid here, I'm just going to take the head off, open it up with a knife, Just get myself a piece of squid. A very good tool you can use, it's just a very simple baiting needle. It's just like having an extra uh, pair of hands. The way I would do it is the bluey, I would just thread onto the needle. I'm going to lay my piece of squid over the bluey, grab my bit of bait elastic, and just start wrapping. Okay, so I'm trying to make a fairly sort of tight sausage. And using the bait elastic is going to do a couple of jobs. Uh, one thing out here in the fast tides, it helps to present a nice streamlined bait that's not going to slide around your hook point and mask it and prevent you from hooking the fish. I also think it holds some of the scent in as well, just perhaps releases a little bit of the oils a little bit steadier and keeps your bait fishing in an effective way. So I'm just going to wrap that up. I'm going to break that off. Okay, you'll notice I haven't actually put the hook into it yet. So I'm going to take my take my trace. Okay, and I'm just using single hooks. You can use panels if you want, but I'm just using single hooks. Now I'm just going to nick the hook under the elastic and just lay it fairly flat along the the bait there, grab my elastic again, and a bit more wrapping. Okay, so now I'm just ensuring that the hook is in position, the hook, hook point is presented out the bait, and then with a single hook, where the line lies along the bait, again, just keep wrapping over that bit of line, all the way to the end, back down a little bit. Break that off, slide your baiting needle out, and there you have a bluey and squid cocktail bait. Well, thanks to Tomo, skipper of the Lorna Dune out of Watch It for showing us one of his favourite baits there. Now, let's talk insects, or rather, the lack of them. So here you go, clover. Now, when I get clover coming up like this, as thick as it does on my lawn here, it's normally covered with honeybees. This year, I've barely seen any honeybees whatsoever. I don't understand it. And when you look really closely, there's not even any small insects in there. You take the same with the daisies. Sections of the lawn do have the daisies on them. Very pretty they are too. I don't think they're a great attractor. Or... Buttercups. Well, hang on, there is one tiny miniature fly in there. But is this the only creature that's going to pollinate the rest of our wildflowers? And what bothers me, folks, is if the insects aren't around to pollinate the pretty flowers, how are we going to get our crops pollinated? What insect is going to pollinate them? And look, a field of dandelions. Has anybody else got plagues of dandelions? Just make sure before they go to the seed head that you cut them down or better still dig them up. Again, no insects. Guys, tell me, have you noticed a lack of insects this year as well? Now, the scary bit. 
some strange goings on on my property. I have no idea what's happening here. You've heard of that Area 54, the secret place where all the UFOs have been. Was well, something bizarre happening here? Well, watch for yourself. So, come down. We've got Jacks for the day. Mike's dog. And we had a squirrel in the pond over here. Obviously not a live one. And Jacks found a smell down here. And we think this is yucky. We'll check the way. Watch out now. Watch out. An entire... He doesn't like foxes. It's a fox that's run and chased the squirrel, we think, into the pond because the weed's on top. And he's drowned as well. You don't like foxes, do you, Ma? No, he doesn't. There you go. Somewhat unusual in the pond. A fox and a squirrel. OK, so Mr Fox failed on his first swimming lessons. And also, I'm not about to allow a grey squirrel into my property to chew through wire cables and burn the house down. So here is one I expired earlier, courtesy of Mr Point22. He's over there waiting for a man to come up on the tree. But listen, I'm standing by the pond. I wash my hands in here because you don't know what diseases they got. That one had diseases all over his pores. Big lumps, so I don't feel too bad with that one. Well, I don't feel too bad with them anyway. But listen, I'm going to tell you down there, it's hard to believe after fishing out two squirrels and a fox in a pond, there's a creature there. I'm going to go around. I know, I know it's another dead thing. What is that? That is only another squirrel. So basically, the air rifle's got one squirrel. The ponds have got, what, one, two, I've got three and a fox, it's mad. Whatever's going on with the world? Well, are they committing suicide? I've got a total infestation of squirrels. I just know that's got to be another yucky, look. What, what's it with, what's it with the squirrel population that they're throwing themselves in the water? Are there any more in there? Anyway, four down. There we go. Dinner for Colin is big time tonight, or today. So with the Raptor dining table fully serviced, it wasn't long before Colin the Kite took a swing over to take a look. Now this high flyer looks like to me a kestrel. Watch the speed with which he drops down through the air. Quite some acceleration there. Now listen, the dead squirrel I've got, look on his paws. This, I believe, is what they call squirrel pox. If you look all over the feet there, nasty, would you call those lesions? I don't know. I understand this is what they spread to the... A native red squirrel, I may be wrong, you naturalists out there will tell us, but I think the best thing to do is put this poor chap out of his misery because that looks pretty gross. But there is definitely something strange and spooky going on at our crib. By the way, crib, that's cool talk for where you live, I think. So guys, wifey's doing an early morning walk, exercise, walking around the garden. I meanwhile, I put out some pieces of chicken trying to get either Colin the kite on the trail cam or Freddy the fox. All the stuff's gone. Nothing's registered on the camera. I'm a lot of trouble with the trail cam at the moment. I don't know, the, the codec signal's not being read by uh, the software. So I'm not sure what's going on, so, so that's not right. But interestingly, right down the bottom, my wife stumbles across a most horrific case. We've got to discover what's done this and what creature it is. Bear with me past the tackle shack. If this wind comes up, I won't be going shark fishing. Woo, mama, it's blowing. Just check this out. Here is the pond where previously I'd found 
a dead fox, squirrels, and over in the other pond, a mouse. But down here, look what a wife has found here. That was not there last night because I was walking around with a trail cam last night. That is the clove hoof of a deer, a fresh one. So what the heck has killed that? And look at the split through the bone of that. Can you see that? I mean, they've chewed off the joint there, but I'm kind of concerned about the degree of pressure to splinter that bone there, right through. Surely a fox hasn't done that. Just look at it, surely not. And a fairly biggish deer, who knows? Fairly big deer, I don't want to get deer ticks off this, that's one thing I don't need. Say badgers might do this as well. Well, I'm just gonna heave it over the fence and I feel put the trail cam and see if something does come back. What creature's done this? Gonna wash my hands after this. I'm just gonna rest it there. And tonight, I'm gonna put the, the trail cam here. Because I don't know if you can see, there's actually a fine pathway around there where some of the creature does actually come around here go along the edge of our boundary fence here and up near the tackle shack actually thinking about it maybe maybe I could fix make a mount up here that looks down because if I want the trees moving on a windy day it sets that uh, trail cam off maybe fix the uh, mount up here and I can see what's going past there tonight I should be out there setting up the trail cam, not going to do it till it's nearly dark and then just see if it records but I've got grave misgivings about the old trail cam the old girl's not to, not being very good at the moment but I did get Mr Foxy again and it gets even more weird well Mike's up and this is weird he's got Jacks with him obviously Jacks knows our garden he's straight down the end of the garden I come down, I think, what the heck has he smelt? Have a look, it's just weird. So many things seem to be throwing themselves into my pond. No, it's not in the pond, but we found a half-eaten deer leg. So he's sniffing around here at something. I've got a glove on, because I'm not touching it without the glove. So I'm looking around, thinking, what is it he's fascinated by? He came straight down to it. People, here it is, you think, oh, is that the deer leg, Graham? Yeah, 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 that's the deer leg. No, that guys has got no cleft toe or anything to it. It's covered in fur. What creature is that? Claw on the end. Look, big claw on the end. I don't know any deer. Two claws there. It's, the bone has been absolutely splintered. Eating the flesh off, I guess. And there's, it's, 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 I can't leave it. It's all got rigor mortis in it. But. You can see there, I think it's something going around killing deer, foxes, I don't know if it's a wolverine, don't know whether it's a, the daughter because the burger place is shut. <laughs> Good job she doesn't watch YouTube, isn't it? But there you go, covered in fur, surely, surely guys, that is a fox. There's the, there's the joint, to his, this must be the hip joint up here, that's the knee joint. See if I can straighten it out for you. So, that is the height of the creature. Surely, if the hip was up here, is that a big fox? I don't know. What do you think? What the hell is going around killing things in my garden? And worse, am I next? The best thing to do with this is heave it over the fence where the deer leg went and see if it's gone in the morning because the deer leg are gone. There's some peculiar creature around here, people. I've put the, I've had that trail cam out several times and here you can see there's the line, look just there, very faint line going along. So there's a creature going through there. I don't know, they're deer, predators, foxes, badgers. But what is eating foxes and deer? Spooky. 
there's definitely something weird going on in my garden. Scared? What, me? Oh, please, no. Because I'm sleeping in the kitchen.